Beep, beep, beep. Ah, all right. Oof. Buckle up, guys, because we've got a whole lot to go over in this one. This is the third episode of the Intro to ZBrush series. Now, if you haven't watched the other two episodes and you have an interest in learning ZBrush, I would recommend you go and start with this one right here. That's the first episode. That's where we go over the UI and a lot of the basics. The second one, we look at sculpting and some more advanced features. And now we're really going to dive into it in this episode. We're going to be looking at masking. We're going to be looking at Z Remesher, Dynamesh, mask selection, all kinds of different things. This is kind of where the training wheels come off and we actually start looking at what ZBrush is all about. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get in and get to it. All right. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to use this disembodied head that we sculpted at the end of episode two. And it's going to be our little demo head. Pretty rough, honestly, but it'll do just fine for what we need to show. All right. So the first thing I want to show you guys is masking and if you watch the time lapse at the end of the second episode you might have seen me use masking to bring out the ears so i want to show you how i did that and how you can use masking to make sculpting easier at the most basic level masking is a pretty straightforward concept you're just painting an area that you don't want to influence so if you're trying to avoid affecting something basically masking it off so that when you sculpt it doesn't hurt it you can use masking in a lot of other creative ways you can use a mask as a way to select something as a way to extrude something there's a lot you can do with it so we're probably not going to show everything about masking in this, but we can at least give a good overview about different things you can do. We're just going to step down a couple subdivision levels so that it's a little easier to work with. And to paint a mask, all you do is hold control and paint on your mesh and it's going to paint a mask. To erase that mask, you hold control and press alt. You're going to see our brush says minus mask now and you can erase. To clear that mask completely, you just control, click drag in empty space, clears the mask. Undo. If you want to invert the mask, you can control click and it inverts the mask. And that's how I did the ears. For the ears, all we did was paint an area, control click in empty space, bring up our gizmo tool, and then we can pull out this geometry without affecting any of the other geometry. And that's gonna be a really powerful tool when you're sculpting and creating assets. Something I don't think I showed you about the gizmo in the last video is if, if you hold Alt and then drag a translation arm, you can move the pivot of the gizmo without affecting the model. So we can position this. So if we undo a little bit, let's just undo a couple times. And then we hold Alt and we say position this right here. And then let go of all when we rotate, we can rotate out. So if you're making an ear, it just makes it a lot easier versus the gizmo being out here and you know, we're pulling out or trying to rotate and it's going in on us. Now that's how you paint a mask and that's pretty straightforward. Another thing I wanna show you about painting masks. So let's paint a mask. You can control click that mask to soften the fall off of the mask. So we're making it softer, you can see. Or you can control alt click to sharpen the edge of that mask. We wanna highlight his eyes, but we wanna soften that area. We just control click a few times. We've now softened the fall off. One more thing about the gizmo. If you click this button here, that'll go to the unmasked mesh center. If you want the gizmo to go directly where you're clicking, hold alt and click somewhere and it's going to bring the gizmo to that location. So, you know, I'm, you'll see me very often alt clicking and then to reset the orientation, you can click this button right here. See, if I don't hold alt and click this, it's going to affect the mesh. If you hold alt and click this, it's going to reset the gizmo without affecting the mesh. Alt basically allows you to modify the position of the gizmo without affecting the geometry. Back to where we were, you can see now, since we added fall off to that, we can pull the eyes in or out smoothly. And then if we hold alt control and we click, now we affect those much more rigidly. When we go to mask, you can see in the top left, we have freehand. Now here's the meta unlock. Click this menu, click stroke. You'll see there's dots, drag, freehand, color spray, rectangle, curve. We can select these to modify the way we interact with our brush. So you click rectangle, for example, you can draw a rectangle, hold in control and make a mask. Or for example, if we choose lasso, 
you now have a lot of control about what you're masking. So we can use the lasso and click drag and lasso an area. We can just choose that. And then you can also, you know, hit control alt, use the lasso to clean up areas that you don't want to have selected. And I have symmetry on, so I affected the symmetry on the other side. That's why that deleted. So you can lasso, and then you could switch back to freehand. You could do freehand. You could switch back to lasso, add some lasso. And uh, I'll, I'll use masking a lot when I'm ready to like extrude the next body part, or I just need something. So for example, if we just wanted to give this guy a neck, mask an area down here. Invert that mask by control clicking an empty space. And then pull a neck down. Maybe smooth it a little bit. And then from there, we can use our move brush to kind of push that in shape. Doing that at the low subdivision, you can. It looks really rough right now. Later in the video, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you what we do in that situation but there's a little bit more i want to go over first in this section before we look at some of the more advanced tools now before we move on there's two additional things i want to show you there is a masking menu so if you go down here and you look for masking you'll see there's a whole mask menu that we can use so let's look at some of those features we won't go crazy if we paint a mask you can grow the mask and blur the mask, similar to what we were doing. You can sharpen it. So these are just the actual buttons for it. We can shrink the mask, shrink and then sharpen. So there's a lot there. And then you can see we also can mask by all different kinds of rules. So for example, we can mask by ambient occlusion. It's only masking areas where ambient occlusion would occur. Let's see if we can crank this up, if we can get more of an obvious effect. If we invert the mask, you can see a lot better. We've affected these deep areas. Now, that might not necessarily be useful for sculpting, although there's plenty you could do with it, but that could be really useful for like painting if you're trying to like texture in cavities or something. And then cavity specifically is a little more intense than ambient inclusion. It goes for all the recessed areas. Obviously you've got settings that can uh, adjust that you can also hit this right here and it's going to open up a graph that you can play with you can mask by peaks and valleys which is really interesting so there's a whole lot of different ways you can mask to get the selection you want just like we've shown before hit control and highlight any of these options and they'll give you an idea of what they do one last thing on masking before we move on to selection if we open up our subtool menu let's mask an area so we're gonna mask some circles right here Maybe this guy's a demon instead and we want to give him horns. You can actually turn a mask into geometry. Let's go ahead and look at our subtool menu. Towards the bottom of the subtool menu, you're going to see extract. Now extract has some settings, smooth, thick, double sided. You can pretty much leave these options default right now. But if you hit extract, you'll see we're going to get a preview of geometry that we can create from this mask. And you can adjust the thickness. So say we turn the thickness to one hit extract we have insane geometry so i'm going to turn that down let's do 0.5 now we've got what's pretty much crazy looking horns maybe we could do something with that say i'm happy with that we can then go down to accept and it's going to turn this from a preview into actual geometry so hit accept and you'll see that it creates a mask on this so control drag to clear that mask and if you look up top we've now created a new sub tool in our subtool menu that are these horns. So now we have two meshes. We have the face and we have these horns. Now, also keep in mind that the mask isn't cleared on the head. So you're gonna wanna go back and clear that. And if you remember in the first or second video, we talked about previewing different subtools. Now you can see we can turn off these subtools with the eyeball to make them visible or not visible. If you ever wanna isolate, or we can come down to the bottom right and hit solo or transparency and that helps us focus on objects now we've got our horns if you wanted you could smooth these out do whatever you want with them obviously these are pretty nasty looking but they give us an idea of what you can do the 
The next thing to look at after masking is selection. I'm actually going to go ahead and hide our horns. We'll keep them in here for now, but I'm going to hide them just using that eyeball. When we hit control, we could paint our mask. If we hit control shift, we get selection. So you can actually hit control shift and then drag. And you'll see this green box. And that's going to just select an area of the mesh. You can control shift drag to invert that selection. So control shift drag. You can control, you can continue to control shift to further isolate. You can control shift alt drag, click and drag to subtract a piece of our selection. So that's going to be over here now instead. And similar to the mask, you can also use the lasso. So to be able to select the lasso, you have to hold control shift, go up to the stroke panel and then select lasso. And now we can do the same thing. So really, really cool stuff. I think it's pretty easy to imagine where this is useful. Like say we just want to focus on this ear or like we don't want to focus on anything else. We just want to focus on the ear so we can grab that and then subtract these areas. And now we can just focus on the ear. There's not a whole lot more to say about selection, but I use it all the time. You know, if I'm just focusing on an area, say I just want to focus on the eyes and just quick lasso select that and then you're good to go. You're chilling. The next thing I want to talk about that kind of builds off selection is poly groups. So we're going to turn on our wireframe shift F or polyfill in the bottom right. And you'll see this entire thing is purple right now. But what we can do is we can actually create poly groups using a bunch of different methods and those include masking and auto selection. So for example, we can select that ear with the lasso, control shift, click and drag. Let's get rid of these areas here. And say we like that selection. You can go over to your left hand side. Quick interjection here. I realized I still had my custom UI partially applied and that's why some of the menus were flipped onto the left side. So if that's confusing, like when we looked at the masking menu, that's just going to be on your right hand side here instead if you're on the default UI. Nothing else is really different. Just keep that in mind. The menu is on the opposite side. I corrected it. I just wanted to interject and say that in case you were wondering what was going on. All right, back to polygroups. So we've got our ears polygrouped and the menu is swapped on the other side on the side that you have now. So if we go to our right hand side, you'll see polygroups. We can expand polygroups. There is a ton of options in here, but what we're looking for is group visible. You'll see it right here, hit group visible. You'll see this change to color. So let's bring back on our, our entire head now, control shift click. And you'll see that our head and our ear are two different colors. This is a quick way to isolate areas. There's also some other things you can do with it, but this is one of the main ones. And so now, for example, instead of having to lasso that ear, if we control shift click that ear, you'll see that we've selected just the ear. So that makes it really easy to work on specific areas. Just like that. If that happens to you, just undo. I don't know exactly why. I think if you select directly on an edge loop, that can happen, but you can also do this with masking. If you go up here and mask an area, you'll see there is group masked. You can click that. Now just that region is masked. The edges can get a little weird, so keep that in mind, but also super useful. Like we can just grab these eyes. We can sharpen that mask a little bit. Group mask. Now we've got those eyes isolated, just like that. There's a lot of different ways to use poly grouping. You can poly paint your object to get poly groups. You can see there's different group visible. There's different options. We're not gonna go too deep. Maybe we'll have a whole polygroups video in the future. Just knowing this is gonna enhance what you can do greatly. Coffee break. You hanging in there? That was a lot and that's okay. So if you need to pause, play around with those settings. We're gonna keep going though. I wanna pack a lot into this video. We've got two or three major things I wanna show you. And then that's gonna probably be the end of this series. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and jump back in. more sip. Next on the list, we're about to get a little crazy and I'm going to show you something called Z Remesher. Now, 
If you spent a little time last episode sculpting, you might have noticed a situation like this neck where you pull the geometry too far out from your sphere and you were having trouble sculpting on it. You can see we try to sculpt on this, it just looks really bad. And that's because the polygons are stretched. They are very, very, very stretched. And one of the things that's really important to sculpting, especially when you're trying to add detail, is that your polygons are evenly distributed throughout your whole mesh. And there is some nuance to that. You obviously want more polygons where you're intending to put more detail. But for the most part, you want it to be fairly even. And if you're starting from something like a sphere, that can be problematic because turning a sphere into a whole character and keeping it even doesn't really make a lot of sense. What you can do is something called Z Remesher. Now I'm gonna show you two ways to use Z Remesher. At its core, what Z Remesher does is just takes your mesh and remeshes the entire thing to have more uniform geometry. So let's just go down to geometry and scroll down a bit and you're gonna see Z Remesher. Open that menu up. By the way, if you wanna have multiple menus open at once, you can shift click the menu instead of just clicking it and it's gonna keep them both open. You'll notice like if we just click fiber mesh, it only opens that. But now if we hold shift, it'll hold both of them open. So just something to keep in mind. All right, if you go down to Z Remesher, let's go ahead and just hit that button. Just hit that button right there, Z Remesher. It's gonna think for a second. And once it's finished thinking, it's gonna change your mesh. And there you go. We can see how even the polygons on this mesh are now. If we go to Sculpt on it, you can see everything is nice and even and you can subdivide and keep sculpting on this. Now this may be problematic for you because when we Z Remeshed, we lost some of our detail and there's a way to deal with that. So we're gonna undo Control Z and we're gonna come up to the Subtool menu. What you can do is duplicate your mesh. We're going to hide the old mesh. So we have two, ver we have two identical versions of our mesh in this subtool. Head one, head two. Click head two. We're gonna go down to that Z remesher. We're gonna go ahead and hit that button. We're gonna wait a moment. And so now we have the original version of our head and we have a Z remeshed version. What I want you to do now is turn visibility on the original head. So now both heads are on. Keep the horns off. We only want the two objects that we're worried about. We only want the head at this point. We don't want anything else that's not related to it. And in our subtool menu, now what we're gonna do is subdivide this a few times. So you'll see that our active points are about 11,000. And you can see if we click our original one, we had 237,000. Now, since our polygons are more evenly distributed, we probably don't need that many, but since we want to capture the details from that original head, we're gonna need to subdivide a few times first. So I'm gonna hit Control D, we're at 44,000, Control D, we're at 179,000. I think that's plenty for what we need to do. So now what I'm gonna do is go up and turn visibility on our original head. So we have that original head and we have our new head and you can see they're kind of overlapping, but they're not perfectly lined up, right? Because of our Z remesh. Now, make sure you have your new head selected, go down to project and we're gonna hit project all. Now you're gonna see if we hide our old head, new one, looks a lot like the original. The difference being our polygons are nice and evenly distributed. So if you select that original head, turn visibility off there. Our polygons on this one, you can see these edge loops. They're running like a sphere and you can see they're coming to a point up here. If we click our new one, everything is nice and even and that's gonna make it so much easier for us to work on, especially the neck area we can actually now sculpt cleanly you know, you might have to smooth out some of that weirdness we projected. So you go down a few subdivision levels, work your way back up, and then you're good to sculpt on this and do whatever you need to do. And it's just a whole lot easier to work on. And you can see we don't need this one anymore. So you can actually delete that old head, but there's a new way to do this that I want to show you. So we're going to delete our new head and just go back to our original. I actually don't know when this was added, but this is something I've only recently learned about. I think it's pretty new. And what we do is rather than going through that whole process of duplicating the mesh, reprojecting it, there's actually a way to simplify that. And it's called capturing your history. And we're gonna use our history to do it. So instead of having to duplicate a new mesh, the Z remesh, we're gonna come down and just Z remesh this head. Bam. Once that's finished, we're actually going to go up to our history timeline. Remember this from an episode ago? 
We're gonna drag back in history before we Z remeshed. Control click on the history selected area. You're gonna see it filled in. So now if we drag back forward, you're gonna see we have a little mark there. It's a checkpoint in history that we've saved. Now, if you go down to the project menu, you'll see we have an option, project history. So before we do that, subdivide a few times, just like we did last time. I'm gonna subdivide up to 180K. And now we're gonna hit project history. Bam. You can see now we've projected all our geometry from that earlier version, but we still have our new topology. So instead of going through the whole ordeal of duplicating, we were able to just look back in time and bring back our detail while keeping our new geometry. So if we step down, you can see it's our new geometry, but we've got our detail. It's not perfect. Some areas get messed up, but it's easy enough just to smooth that stuff out and then keep working. This is an integral part to sculpting. So, you know, I use Z remeshing and reprojection all the time because I work rough reproject to clean or Z remesh it to clean it up a little bit, continue working, so on and so forth. And, you know, this could go even further. Like if we were like, okay, we're ready to add a body to him. We could select an area, drag this down. And turn this really, really rough geo into a body. You don't need to try sculpting it entirely right now, but we're just roughly getting into place. We have that. So we can go ahead and Z remesh once that's done. Once we're done Z remeshing, we can do the same thing. We can subdivide a couple times and then go back in history, control click that history, go forward, go back down to project. Here we go, project, project history. And now we've got the detail from our face and our body. Now our body is gonna look super whack, but just Step down your subdivisions, smooth it out, work back up the chain, smooth it out. Same for the back. And now we've got a whole body to work with and fairly clean geometry. Now you can just take whatever time you need to sculpt on this and work on it and do your thing. This method may not seem like the optimal way to make a character from scratch, and that's because it's not, but it's a total viable way. Like if I'm just feeling lazy or I go into ZBrush and I'm not really sure what I want to do yet and I just start with the sphere and I'm doodling and I decide, oh, I want to add a body or I want to add a detail. This is kind of just a working straight ahead method and it is totally feasible and it works. But there are some easier ways to do stuff like this. So, you know, if you were planning on making a whole character, instead of starting from one sphere, you could start from multiple shapes. So. Let's say we wanted to give this guy arms. And obviously this body is super messed up right now. With our method, you could, you know, mask the area out, pull these out, give him little arms, and then do the Z remesh technique. Now, another thing you could do is you could maybe start from a cylinder. So you remember how we have all these different primitives up top here, but you can also import a primitive directly into your subtool. Down in our subtool menu, we have append and insert. You can go ahead and hit append and it's gonna bring up this menu and then you can choose an object to bring in. So if we had other tools, we could actually import other tools into this subtool. But for this purpose, you're gonna hit cylinder. Now we've got a cylinder in here. So you'll see we've got our body, our horns and our cylinder. You can grab that, eyeball our body on and we can drag this cylinder over, scale it, shrink it, do whatever we want. And we can stick this kind of like an arm would be. And now you can do whatever you want. You know, we could, we could spend some time now just taking this cylinder and shaping it into an arm. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. There you go, we've got an arm. Beautiful. We can then mirror this if we want. You could duplicate this cylinder. So in our social menu, there's duplicate. You can hit duplicate. Now we have two arms. 
go down to what's called deformation. You'll see this menu right here, deformation. There's a ton of stuff in here. You can do all kinds of crazy <gasps> shit, but at the very top, there's mirror and there's the axis X, Y, and Z. We're on X, so you can click mirror. You'll see that it gave us an error because we have subdivisions. That is a downside to this, but that's okay because we're going to merge all this together. So go to our geometry tab and we're going to delete lower. So we have no subdivision levels. We're going to go back down to deformation and we're going to mirror it. Now we've got two arms, two goofy, goofy looking arms. Now our problem is that our arms are a separate mesh from our body and we want them to be all connected. No problem. Like Photoshop, you can drag your layers around and reorder them. So I'm just going to drag my body down so I have these all together. And what you can do is you'll see down a couple options in our subtool menu. There's merge. Open that up. All right. So make sure that before we merge these together, you have the head with the level of detail that you want to retain. So we're going to make sure we're on our highest subdivision level. We're going to go down to merge and we're going to merge down, merge down. And we're going to do it once more, merge down. Now we have our body and our arms all merged together in one sub tool. We can kind of sculpt on this and it is going to modify both pieces of geometry. And you'll even see if we hit shift F, our arms are polygroup, so we can actually isolate these. A quick tip about that, if you want to merge a polygroup together what we can do is we can we can control shift click this arm and then we can control shift drag and space and then control shift click this arm and then control shift drag and space again go down to our polygroup menu and we can do what's called group visible now those are together so if we just control shift click these we have just the arms but we actually want these arms and the body to be one contiguous mesh. Right now they are not. They are two separate meshes. And you can see if we smooth, they are not connected. And so we need to do what's called a DynaMesh. And a, dyna a DynaMesh creates new geometry based off pre-existing geometry and merges it all together. We're gonna go down to our geometry menu. We're gonna see above zero mesher, there's DynaMesh. Click that, do it, you won't. Now you'll see if we hit Shift F, this is all merged together now. Pretty sick but you'll also see it hurt a lot of detail but that's okay because now what we're going to do is z remesh this the dyna mesh merged all our geometry together so we have one contiguous mesh but it also made our geometry really inefficient and you can see how weird this geo looks if you zoom in right that's not good sculpting geometry same as earlier now come down to z remesher hit z remesher wait a second once that's done you now see we have much nicer smoother geometry just like last time let's go back in history go back to better days we're gonna go back to when we had head detail and our arms were separate and i'm gonna control click we're gonna go forward in time we're gonna subdivide a couple times 180,000 should be enough and then we're gonna project our history and now everything looks a little rough but it's all one mesh still and that's really all we wanted so we can just smooth this out. Now we've got a whole lot we can work with. So we can like really start to now shape this and help this guy out because he needs it. <laughs> My profile view is really something. But yeah, so we're not going to spend time on that right now. And yeah, there you go. Now you've got a head with a body and arms with different ways to do that. A DynaMesh is super useful. So even if you're just sculpting for fun, if we hop over to a sphere, I'm just gonna choose a sphere real quick. You can use DynaMesh just like say you're concepting or doodling and you're not worried about your geometry. You can just use that all the time. So it's like turn on symmetry, like we sculpt a bit, like we're gonna sculpt this head a little bit. And we're like, oh, I want this guy to have some sick ass horns, but I'm too lazy. So you can just pull this out. And now you're like, oh, the geometry is really bad. Go down the DynaMesh. You have to delete your subdivisions or freeze them. The DynaMesh. And now with DynaMesh on, you'll see once we hit it, DynaMesh actually enables. And what we can do is once DynaMesh is enabled, at any time we can pull something out and then control drag and re-DynaMesh. 
So control drag, redynamesh, and you'll see. Let's turn off. Let's turn on our wireframe. If we control drag, you'll see it recreate a new geometry. So we can just dynamesh infinitely. So if you're just doodling, you're like, oh, let's 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 give this guy some weird spikes. Pull it out, dynamesh it, and now our geometry is easier to sculpt on. You could just sculpt this way until you actually want to turn this into a real character, and then you can use zero measure to clean up your geo and get more serious. But we're just doodling and having fun. This is perfectly acceptable to just dynamesh and sculpt on it however you want. Whew. All right, we've gone over a lot, but there's one more thing I want to show you before we wrap this video up, and that's what's called poly paint. So we're going to keep this brief. Let's go back to our character and we're going to turn off wireframe. So we've mentioned it before, but we have this RGB option up top and you'll see that or off. And then when we turn it on, we have this RGB intensity, but we still have our Z add enabled. So what that means is if we look over to our left hand side and we pick a color for one, you'll see that the color changes the entire character. And if you want to apply an entire color to the character, what you can do is choose a color. So I'm going to choose like a skin tone. And you can go up to color in the top left and fill object. Click that. Now keep in mind that fill is going to be based off this RGB intensity. So if this is set to like 50 or 20, for example, and you hit fill, it's only going to flood it with about 20% of the color you have chosen. But if you want to completely saturate it with the color you have chosen, make sure that's at 100. Now, if we change that color, so I'm just going to change it to red. So it's obvious and we paint, you can see now we've both affected the geometry and the color of the object. So you'll see that there. Now there's a lot of cases where you might want that, where you want to spray it and color at the same time. But if you turn off Z-Add, now we're only texturing. And the same goes for any of your brush modifiers too. So for example, for example, when you go to smooth, like you can hit shift. If you turn Z add off, you can smooth and just smooth your paint. Kind of blend it in a little bit. You can also control the intensity. So if we turn this down to like 28, you can see we're very lightly putting it down. So like Photoshop, if you want to kind of like build it up, you could totally do that. You can also use alphas. So if you want to apply an alpha to your brush, turn the intensity up a little bit. You can see that we're kind of spraying and that's really all there is to it. You can also play with the, the stroke methods. So you, there's actually like color spray, for example. Which can be interesting for like smaller skin details, stuff like that. Also note when you're poly painting, the reason it's called poly painting is it's based off the amount of verts you have. So when you're actually texturing or when you're actually painting in ZBrush, the amount of fidelity you have rather than like in Photoshop where it's like, oh, your canvas is a 1024 or 2000 or 3000 pixels. It's not pixels, it's polygons. So each vert can hold a color value. And the more verts you have, the more granular your detail can get. So if we subdivide, if we subdivide, we can actually paint much finer than if we were at a low subdivision level. You can see we lose that detail, but the higher we go, the more we can paint. So almost, I mean, it's very similar to actually sculpting your mesh. The higher subdivision you have, the more detail you can add. Same goes for poly painting. And that's really pretty much it to poly painting. We do have this M up here and that's the material channel. So you can paint a material. Like if we, for example, chose this chrome well first we go back to our gray when that's enabled so you can either do rgb material or there's mrgb which is material and rgb at the same time and we go to color and we do fill object make sure our, our rgb intensity is set to 100 percent color fill object now if we switch our material you'll see it didn't change but if we go and paint, 
we're gonna paint that material on the mesh. I don't really use it that often. What I do use the filling material for is different sub tools. So if I want a piece of armor to have a different material than the head does, I'll fill it with M and that way the material stays different. And if I, you know, if I change materials, it's not swapping on me every time I change the material. So it's just kind of easier on me. Finally, what I want to show you in this video is sometimes you might accidentally mess something up or your mesh might get duplicated on your canvas or you just get in a state where you're like not really sure what to do. You can always just hit control N on your keyboard. So for example, say we go up to color and we accidentally hit fill layer instead of fill object. Hit control N, drag your model back out, hit T to go back in edit mode and you're good to go. And, you know, you'll sometimes that just happens on you. Say we accidentally got out of edit mode and suddenly we've got a bunch of meshes on our canvas. Just hit control N, drag your model back out, hit T and you're back in business. We went over a lot. We went over masking, selection, Z remesher, Dynamesh, poly painting, a ton of stuff, but it's all tools that are gonna make sculpting easier and gonna expand what you can sculpt. So I totally recommend you just going crazy and really practicing those tools, learning where they are. As you could see from this video, a lot of that stuff is in all different kinds of menus. And I know I threw a lot at you in this video, but if you really take some time to learn that stuff, it's gonna be the bedrock for everything you do in ZBrush going forward for your entire career. Now there's a lot of other things in ZBrush that you've heard of like Z Modeler, uh, Z Spheres, tons and tons of other things. That's okay because that's all stuff we build on from these foundational skills. This is likely going to be the last video in the intro to ZBrush series. This was intended to get you from never using ZBrush before to actually sculpting an object. And I think with these three videos, you should be able to do that and feel comfortable doing that. If at this point you feel like there's stuff that you don't know or you have questions or you're confused, please, please, please drop comments underneath this video asking and I'll make sure to respond to those. Like I've mentioned before, I also stream on Twitch. You can find me over there if I'm streaming. Come in the chat, ask me any questions you have. I'll happily go over them and show you what I know. I really hope you enjoyed this series and I hope that it was able to fulfill my goal of getting you up and running in ZBrush and being able to make your own art. I hope I've helped set you on a journey to create your own artwork and really explore the world of digital sculpting because it's really awesome and there's so much cool stuff. And we're going to cover a lot of that in future videos. I'm going to keep making ZBrush tutorials on this channel. We're also going to look at texturing and substance painter and other software. So stick around. Please consider subscribing. And thank you so much. I'll see you in another video.